Guys and gals, today's show is all about the squirrels. To kick this show off, and, and per my own you know, dad joke personality, I was going to have some kind of pun lined up, but everything I thought of was just a little bit too nutty. The fuzzy tail chasing, squirrel dog raising, shotgun toting, squirrel gravy loving fool Marcus Gray is back on the show today. He's got some advice on how to start squirrel hunting. You ready? Many of you know that squirrel hunting was my entry point to hunting. I love chasing bushy tails. It is super fun. And I want you to love it, which is why I asked Marcus to come back onto the show. Today, we'll talk about seasonal food sources, to pack or not to pack, pro tips on carrying squirrels, camo, does it even matter? How to create your own squirrel fertility clinic, Marcus's favorite squirrel meals, and so much more. Before I go on, I just want to remind you that Go Out is the most active social community for aspiring hunters. No place, and I will stand by this, no place place will help you learn from other hunters like go out you can join this active community right now at downloadgowild.com we got a link in the show notes and as of today if you just download the app and create an account we're going to give you 10 bucks for trying it out who else does that nobody that's who go try it out all right this is gearbox talk with me brad luttrell your host and marcus gray Marcus Gray, welcome back to Gearbox Talk. How you been, man? Good. Thanks for having me, Brad. I'm, you know, staying busy and trying to get through this squirrel season in one piece. I lost a dog for four days, um, which doesn't generally happen, but she's back now. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> she's very happy uh, to see us. <laughs> yeah, I bet. After like four days on her own. Well, I'm glad you found her. Uh, we're, we're, we're not going to be talking yes. about necessarily how to not lose your dog today, but maybe we, we might get that advice sure. at the end. <laughs> um, all right, man. Put, put the tracking system on the old dog. There you go. That's it. That's it. Uh, we, 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 that's all you need to know for, for you know, we're going to put a link to the Garmin collars in here uh, that, that we sell and you can not lose. Thank your you. Dog. <laughs> it's just for you. Marcus. Perfect. Perfect. Get hard of hearing. That's yeah. right. She's getting hard of hearing. Uh, too many, too much firing over her, I guess. So. I guess so. so she um, was actually uh, on, on a guy's porch eating his dog food. So. She was oh, well, there you go. Well, you know, I, I my dog's getting old, and I don't think he's getting hard of hearing. I think he's just getting more stubborn because he doesn't listen to anything I tell him either. Mm. Uh, <laughs> all right, man, let's talk about some squirrels. Sure. Um, <laughs> yep. do, you, do you find uh, the squirrels are hanging out around different types of food sources throughout the year? Like, are they moving around? We talk about deer. You think about deer hunting. They're moving yeah. around from food source to food source. How much are squirrels doing that in the different seasons? Because some places have a spring and fall. Um, and, and how, how much variation mm -hmm. do you see in that? Yeah, there, there's actually quite a bit. Um, if you're in some States like Missouri that opens in late May for the mulberry season to coincide with that, or like you said, you've got a June season, like we do here in Virginia, um, they're keying on soft mass, like, like mulberries and, and, uh, wild grapes and things like that. Um, and then they switch sort of like the height of summer, they start eating cones, pine cones. So you find them in those sites and then they go on down into hickories in late summer and then the oak mass really starts to pick up so yeah there's definitely a seasonality to it and you'll find that they'll make nests next to a, a, a short-term food source or, or even next to like a corn field or something like that so they can easily get those resources um you know without sp expending too much energy yeah um so very interesting uh and again you know a lot of this i'm trying to make sure people are like that are getting into squirrel hunting you're kind of thinking through where to find them because it's one of those things like just because you saw them here in the spring they may not be back in that exact spot right um, sure you kind of got to know yeah. what you're looking for um and as we'll, we'll put the link if you really enjoyed the show we'll put a link to the other show i've done with marcus uh where we we talk all about squirrels a little bit different line of questioning and we talk about dogs in that last mm -hmm. one too uh but for this one uh you know a lot of people i grew up squirrel hunting without dogs you, it's a lot of walking right like you um you end up doing a, a, putting a lot of boots on the yes. ground um, but, but it's not necessarily like boots on the ground, Western style packing your whole life on your back. It's lightweight stuff, right? You're going to park a truck. You're going to walk around. Um, sometimes I don't even have a pack, but I'm kind of curious, what do you do in, on the, you know, with the, with dogs, you're doing a lot of, uh, you know, walking, uh, mm -hmm. what are you doing? What kind are you, are you doing a vest? Do you have a pack? What, how do you approach that? 
Yeah, so you know, that's exactly right. I mean, this score hunt can be as gear heavy or as toy heavy as you want it to be, but it is an inexpensive thing to get into, and you don't need high end equipment to get started. Um, so that helps with getting anybody from all backgrounds involved. Like you said, you can get more into it over time. But um, yeah, I, I generally wear a game vest, like you might see a bird hunter wear. Um, and you know, when you shoot a score, we put in there. Some people put them in a plastic bag, then put them in there. Um, you know, just to try to keep, you know, keep drier and, and keep things from bleeding through the vest and things like that. But generally, um, yeah, we do a vest. Um, if somebody has a pack, it's generally something with orange on it, just because we overwhelmingly hunt public land and just want to be safe. But if you set it down, you can find it again. And um, if you're taking kids, we'll have snacks and drinks and, you know, that we'll carry with us. But usually in the truck, um, I carry everything in our dog box. It's got top storage. Um, so I use that a lot. But if you're not if you're not hunting with a dog, um, having a, a bottle that you can twist a lid back on, whether it's a soft drink or water or um, a reusable bottle, ideally. Right. Um, you can stuff that down in one of the best pockets uh, and carry that around with you, because sometimes you do get pretty far away from the vehicle or you might misjudge the timing of how things might go. And just so you have something, so you're not dying of thirst as you're walking around. Yeah. Never a bad idea to bring a little extra hydration in a, with you. Um, you kind of said something and I'm curious on, on this, uh, you talked about wearing orange, obviously good, uh, especially depending mm -hmm. on the time of year, uh, that you're hunting, you know, you get too close in the like, yeah. deer season and, uh, you definitely want to have that orange on, um, when, when there's a higher, uh, population of deer hunters out there, but, uh, you know, some guys on, especially dogs sure. camo may not be as important. I'm kind of curious on, uh, what's your approach on the camo when you're, when you're squirrel hunting? Yeah. If you're, you're still hunting or stand hunting camo is really more of a fashion statement. I mean, we all, I mean, I'm wearing plaid right now, but, um, normally there's something camo around us. So I was looking behind me, see there's a jacket laying around. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's more, of, it's more of just like, people feel comfortable wearing to hunt. I mean, we grew up hunting, uh, without dogs and, um, we wear blue jeans and a t-shirt yep. you try to avoid white, you know, just yeah. again, for the, the deer reasons, but, um, it's more movement. You know, if, if you're herky jerky or you make rapid movements with your hands, that'll, that'll key the squirrels into you. I mean, think about how they are. They flick their tail to get each other's attention. So that flag wave. And if you, you know, it's sort of like, if you go scratch your face, it's slow motion. I've got to scratch my yeah. nose. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not, ah! yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just stuff just moves. And, um, and, and talking to, um, without a dog, it's like, it just doesn't happen, especially if the squirrels are hunted and they're educated and they've got a lot of pressure, which isn't as common today as it used to be. Um, you know, you step on a stick when you're, when you're walking, they could just leave the country. But, um, these days you, it's a lot more forgiving. Uh, most yeah. of the time, you know, we get lots of people hunting now from this show. It's, it, it could go back to that where they're just really wary. Um, yeah. do a lot of running through the treetops and stuff like that. That's what I was going to bring up. You know, I think you and I talked about this on the last show, but squirrel hunting is one of the best things you can do when you first start hunting, because it is so forgiving. And, you know, if you, if you screw up and a squirrel sees you and kind of runs mm -hmm. off, they're back in like five minutes, you know, they're, and, and they're generally pretty tight. Yeah, just sit and, still, be quiet. Yep. Yep. Even after you pop one, I mean, 15, exactly. 20 minutes, you know, they'll, they'll come back. Um, that that's what I love about squirrel yeah. hunting is once you do find a good area that holds, uh, it's good habitat, holds some food, like they're packed in there and you can, you know, you can get your, your limited squirrels, um, wearing blue jeans. It's, I mean, what else can you do? You know, it's like a really right. fun way to get in with low <laughs> gear barrier. Um, so for private property, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Braden, Braden came up with this question. I thought it was interesting. Um, you know, when, when you're squirrel mm -hmm. crazy, like you guys are, uh, are, are you doing anything to no. increase your, your squirrel hunting habitat? Like, are you, are you kind of, is there a certain tree you're planting or, or is there anything you guys do to improve the, the squirrel habitat? Well, I, I'd say that most people probably just rely on the, of nature providing, you know, they, they just kind of take what comes and, and deal a lot with ups and downs for the population every year. But, you know, on private land, there are some things you can do you can install nest boxes. You know, if there aren't natural dens or leaf nests in your area, you put those boxes up and that'll help hold the squirrels in the area. Um, and then just like you plant a food plot for deer or turkey or, um, or anything else, you know, corn, sunflowers, peanuts, you know, any of those types of grain crops, the squirrel will eat those too. Um, but really you're talking about thinning the timber. That's a huge thing you can do, increase that mast production. So acorns, hickory nuts, um, beech nuts, you know, depending on where you are. And the 
just getting more energy to the individual trees that are producing those nuts so that there's a bumper crop more often than there isn't um, on a given year. And so um, that, that's a lot of what you can do is really just good forest management is, is key. Um, if you want fox squirrels, you have to have even more uh, open understory, less density of trees per acre and that sort of thing. And all that exists out there to be found. Um, but if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to, happy to answer that. But a lot of the um, early studies in, in wildlife management and game management are actually focused on squirrels and mallards. You know, mallard ducks are the most studied bird in, in human history. But um, there weren't deer, there weren't turkeys, there were hardly any bear. So a lot of the state agencies were really focused on quail, squirrel, and rabbit. Um, so there are a lot of good studies in the 30s and 40s to talk about managing for squirrel populations, if that's something that you're interested in. That is interesting. And and you kind of mentioned about reaching out. Uh, quick shout out, Mark, Marcus is on Go Wild, active on Go Wild. Uh, you can find him on yep. d- downloadgowild.com, create an account. You can find him there if you have some more questions. He's he's awesome, active member, always happy to help. Um, what What's uh what's one... Appreciate it. What's what's one piece of squirrel gear, like whatever it could be, uh, that that's just like one of your favorite things really changed the game for you? Uh, the vest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, um, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, it was like dad and I would go and we'd shoot, you know, four or five, six squirrels. And we were always, you know, using the pocket knife to cut through the pad in the foot and run a piece of buck brush through it. So you, you had a hand on, you could carry them around that gets hard to do. Uh, (laughs) You know, you're a little kid and you're trying to carry six squirrels. It's a lot of weight. So, um, you know, the vest is just a game changer. Free your hands up, you know? So if you fall, you're not falling into a pile of squirrels or, you know, hitting yourself on a rock or a stop or something like you can actually catch yourself because you're not carrying so much. The vest was a, was a big game changer, uh, you know, but they make all sorts of things. You can, you know, basically like a, um, a fish stringer, they yep. make all sorts of little clips and things you can use for that same purpose, you know, hanging from your belt and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, dude, I use a, uh, a carabiner, like I'll, uh, you know, cut their, cut their leg yeah. right there <laughs> behind the tendon and, uh, you know, put, put a carabiner yep. through and then I just hang them on. I, I've hunted a bunch with my uh, little go wild tack bag. It's just a little bitty, uh, tack bag that we have mm. like a sling bag. And then, you know, you can kind of yes. hang, them, hang them off that. It works cool. great. Uh, yeah, the vest is a good upgrade. I've yep. got a squirrel vest that, that I also use. Um, and those are also nice because, uh, like, I think you said this a second ago, but, like, they've got that uh, the pad that keeps the blood from leaking all over you, too, if you got a bloody one. Mm-hmm. So that's always nice. Yeah, and, and a lot of the old-timers used to use those sling bags, you know, over the shoulder. And they have just this little pouch, uh, and you can put the squirrels in that, too. That, that was common, you know, 1700s, 1800s. So that's how people mm-hmm. carried the squirrels around. They had little leather leather. Uh, satchel for like a better word yeah yeah um all right man kind of wind it down here i'm, I'm curious on the last question this okay. might lead, this might lead into a couple of different answers but you, you're the squirrel okay. hunt you're the squirrel hunting fool the squirrel hunting master here what is one of your favorite uh yes. ways like you got one way to cook squirrel until the end of time what are you choosing as that <laughs> recipe well i mean i guess it depends end of time it has has society collapsed or not i mean i think some of the um the traditional ways, you know, if you have access to resources, um, you know, generally fried is an easy way to go. Everybody loves fried chicken, right? So fried squirrel, um, you know, uh, garlic Parmesan, like you would do wings or something. Oh my gosh. It's just, it's so good. Um, so if you've ever had like pheasant legs, it's, it's very similar to that. You know, I, I'm hesitant to say it tastes like chicken because it doesn't, but, um, it's similar. Uh, like if you've had wild rabbit, it's a little yeah. darker meat than wild rabbit. Um, but yeah, any, any fried is generally a safe way to go. It might not be the healthiest way, but it's it's simple and it, you don't get tired of it as easy as you might some other thing. Now I'm curious when when you parboil or, or do you parboil when you fry? Because I know some people that parboil the squirrel. Some. some. Yeah, it depends. Like if it's an older animal, like an old sow or something, it might be tougher. You know, you can put them in a, in a pressure cooker for a little bit or, or a crock pot. Yeah. Um, brining can be huge. Like and basically any of them. I think we've talked about this before that. Um, I'll just take the squirrels, you process, you know, field dress them and then put them in a bowl of salt water, put them in the fridge overnight. It just makes a world of difference. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think, uh, that can, that can make a different, a lot of difference on uh, a variety of different things you cook and it, it can, um, mm-hmm. help hold in moisture too. You know, that salt kind of, it's yes. like why a salt rub works really well is, is it kind of locks right. the pores and it's not leaking all the juices out and, and on something that's super lean, that can really matter. Mm-hmm. All right, Marcus. Um, Give us a yes. shout out for where to find you. And you guys got a cool dog line too, if you want to kind of mention that here too. So, uh, you know, where do people go to connect with you? Okay, thanks. 
Yeah. So on social media, we're um, at Gray's Mountain Feist uh, online, but social media, we're uh, hashtag Gray Feist. And like Brad said, we're on Go Wild, but we're on all the major things. Um, but yeah, our website is just graysmountainfeist.com. Yep. And we're going to put links to uh, any of the gear that we, we have that we talked about today. It's going to be in the show notes and uh, we'll, we'll drop in a couple other things that might be good for just consideration on your squirrel hunts. And I want to put a link to the other show that we did with Marcus. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call out here, you know, if, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube, to our podcast feed for this show, you got to do it. Cause I'm getting guys like Marcus on here every single Wednesday, we drop these Wednesday night. So don't miss out go ahead and subscribe. So Marcus, thanks for coming on to uh, gearbox talk, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me again. Yes, sir.